It's the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast right here on the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. And uh, we're live. I'm Ross Benjamin, your host. And like every Friday afternoon on our live show, I am joined by my trusted cohorts, Mr. Jesse Shule and Sean Higgs, all three of us of gamblersworld.net, which is our sponsor site, folks. And again, uh, exciting news today. I, I think we're going to be uh, giving somebody a free package uh, from any of their chosen handicappers, correct, Jim? I mean, uh, give me a nod in the background there, buddy. Yes, that's correct. So uh, exciting news there. And then if you go to gamblersworld.net, we're in in the middle of March Madness already. So a lot of the conference tournaments going on right now. And um, uh, we are going to uh, have a March Madness special continue going on. $2.99 will get you the rest of the uh, college basketball regular season and the conference tournaments, which are taking place in a lot of conferences right now. The NIT, the CBI, and the NCAA tournament right through the championship games. Let's get, we got three college basketball games for tomorrow, which is Saturday, March, uh, March the 9th. And speaking of March the 9th, uh, Mr. Shul, who is located in Thailand, it is March the 9th there. So, Anyway, we're recording on March 8th. For for uh, me and Sean, it's March 8th. For Jesse, it's March 9th. Now that I confuse the living hell out of you, Jesse, how are you? I'm doing all right, Ross. I did uh, lose a bit of a heartbreaker with the Oregon Ducks last night, my only play of, of uh, yesterday. And uh, I'm hoping for better things today. I got a couple uh, couple college games, and I got some nice nice closing line value on both of them. Feeling really good about it. Hoping for a big bounce back. Mr. Sean Higgs. Sean is, uh, you know, you could find him all over the internet in terms of videos, and he does a great job no matter uh, whether he's on our platform, his own platform, or I saw him on Vissen the other day, by the way. Very nice, Sean. Congratulations. That's a definitely a feather in any handicapper's uh, cap whenever they appear there. Yeah. On Vision, do they mute their mics or? Yeah, they mute yeah. the mics. I uh, well, you know why? Because I, I cracked open a, a, a diet Dr Pepper that I didn't want to make a crazy noise, and uh, yeah, so I've you know I've I've met those guys. I got there for you know the sign up circuit and Westgate contest and stuff. So I've met them over the years, and uh, we follow each other on Twitter. And he's like, he messaged me. He's like. It's like, you really on the run? I'm like, yeah. I said, and normally I don't put those up there. Like, all right, you go six and two runs, you go a little runs. Yeah. That's not a big deal. Then I'm like adding them up. I'm like, oh, we're having a nice little run. I add them up, and all of a sudden you're at like 16 and four or something. Like, wow, this is actually a nice little run. And then he came out, and I'm like, I, listen, I'm not going on tonight. I said, you'll jinx me. And then he had mentioned me on the show that night, and I went, I think, two and one. And then the next day, he, he Best we can store my show. He's like, oh, you come on tonight. I'm like, oh, I'll come on tonight. I, you know, and I went two and one again. So, but yeah, it's, you know, that's pretty cool. I mean, come on. That's a, that's a show that's all over the place. You know, I mean, yeah. not to knock our little shows that we do, but that's, I mean, no, not on, at all. It's, that's, it, on, it's that's still, on TV. That was, you know, that I found them on Sirius, you know, six years ago, whenever they were on. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that it, was nice. And the best part is, though, I actually went two and one. So that's pretty good. And I picked up about 30 followers. So, I, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, we're extremely proud of you. That That's great news. And uh, that's a feather in the cap, not only to you, but to all of us as well, because uh, it gives us more exposure as well when they see you on a bigger channel. And uh, our channel doing quite well here, folks. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, I would encourage you to do so. Over 200 of you have done so over the last 28 days at this time of year, which we're more than elated with. And uh, we now have over 12,600 subscribers, and we appreciate each and every one of you. But those of you who have not subscribed, take a second to do so. There's a black subscribe button right underneath you. Click on that. It's absolutely free. Uh, there's no strings attached. There's no hidden agenda there, folks. It'll always be free. Um, and if you're on your PC, you'll see a WC logo in the bottom right-hand corner of your page. Just click on that. That will serve the same purpose. And then uh, if you haven't done this already as a current subscriber, and if you're new, uh, take an extra second to do this. Go to um, your YouTube settings and click on the alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast, sports betting channel, I should say. And 
upon any of our five podcasts going up weekly, um, you will uh, be notified immediately. So make your life a lot easier if you enjoy the show. And if you're watching, you definitely are interested in sports betting. And we bring you some of the best handicappers in the world right here on the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. Guys, by the way, Monday, uh, Monday afternoon, 1.30, we're going to be going live. I haven't even discussed this with my owner yet. Jim, <laughs> just to let you know, we're going live Monday at 1.30, NCAA tournament show. With Jesse Shule, Sean Higgs, and Doug Upstone. On Monday? So thank, down, thank. Folks. <laughs> What's that, Sean? I'm sorry. This, okay, Monday? We're doing Monday yeah. live show? This Monday's coming Monday. So whatever you guys got scheduled, cancel it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, got, gonna, I got a wedding. I'm going to have to cancel a wedding. Yeah, as long as you're not getting – you're already married, man. So anything <laughs> above and yeah. beyond that, you're good. <laughs> I was so, going to do live shows. I'm like, you know what? I said, I'll be running live shows during the tournament games. Why not? Yeah. So, and that also will be on archives. So if you're not able to catch uh, it at 1.30 PM Eastern time, we do put it up on our archives as well. You could just to get our uh, archives on our live show. And I know a lot of you get confused with this, but um, usually you just go to our YouTube channel page and all our shows are listed, but just click on that live button on the top. And that'll show you all the archives of our live show if you can't catch that live. So looking forward to it. Um, Selection Sunday. Uh, not this Monday. I'm sorry. Let, let me rephrase that. Wait, I got ahead of myself. The week from this Monday, guys. A week from this Monday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that will be a day before is the NCAA tournament selection uh, show for on CBS. And we will be doing it on the Monday after. Uh, which is today is what the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, Monday, the 18th. 18th. Mark that down, guys. Monday, the 18th at 1 30 p.m. Eastern Time. And Doug Upstone will be joining us, uh, three as well. All right, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look on my, my, my other desk here. I have a bunch of uh, paper tape because, like, with the kids, I'm like, all right, is it the dentist? Is it the braces? Is yes. it a doctor visit? Is it what days do I have what? <laughs> Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, we're all in that boat, right? So sorry to hit you up with that, but um, again, nah, we're, good. Good. We're, we're good. Anyway, all right, Jesse, uh, let's take a look at your game. It's uh, Kentucky at Tennessee, and Kentucky will be playing with revenge in this spot as they lost by 11 at home. Uh, right now, according to Ken Palm, and again, folks, the official lines haven't come out for Saturday yet. Uh, because we're doing it so early, we go with the Ken Palm line, and they're usually right in the neighborhood. And if they're off, it's not by that much. So right now, according to Ken Palm, uh, Kentucky is a nine-point favorite, in the, or excuse me, Tennessee is a nine-point home favorite, and the total in this contest is 163. Jesse, take it away. Yeah, we talked about Tennessee at uh, South Carolina, their last game. Uh, Ross, I think you had uh... – Tennessee plus six or plus five and a half, of course. There I was South uh, Carolina, actually at South Carolina plus the five. And sorry, half. that's I, I meant to say that plus yeah. the points. And then there was uh, a bucket at the buzzer that got waved off, right? That would have yeah. uh, would have made the difference in the cover. I, I had a premium pick on the under in that game, so that didn't affect me quite as 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 much. But uh, Tennessee, obviously, one of the better teams in the country right now. They're on a roll winning seven straight. They're coming off wins over Auburn, Alabama, and that win at South Carolina, clinching the SEC. But you got to think eventually they got to be due for a bit of a, not, not so much of a letdown, but can you really bring your A game night in, night out, beat the, the best of the best? And now they've they've actually accomplished something. They've done everything. They've, they, you know, they've clinched uh, one seed. They're, they've clinched the uh, SEC. And they're laying nine at home against a very good Kentucky team playing with revenge. I got to take the points with Kentucky. Just uh, I think Kentucky can hang. And, and you know, I, I could see Tennessee coming out and having a bit of a lackluster performance after all the, the big games and the big wins that they've racked up in recent weeks. I agree with you, Jesse. Um, I looked at this number. Ordinarily, Sean, I would look at a number like this and say, wow really heavy number, they're, they're really begging you to take Kentucky here. But that's not the case here because Tennessee has been extremely good. And like Jesse touched upon, they've won their last seven. However, um, 
Kentucky's not been bad either. They've won seven of their last eight. A uh, couple quality road wins at Auburn and at Mississippi State, two teams that we've more, in all likelihood, and barring something more unforeseen, will uh, be uh, top eight seeds, top eight se- within the top eight seeds in the NCAA tournament, I should say. Uh, but what's your take here, Sean? You know, I like in, like you say, like think like a book, but you see a nine like this. Yeah. What are we doing? I, and, and I have to agree with Jesse. Like, all right, they've won. It's a lot of points. Why wouldn't I take basically 10 points? Because now you need a, a monster win. I I don't think Tennessee's going to come out and want to lay an egg at home in their final home game off a great year. You know, I mean, they're 14. Do they really want to come in and just have a, not a, a good game? But nine? Like, is this? I, I, I don't know what to think of this number. Yeah. I don't, I mean, and I was just doing my show. I was like, you know what? Let's look at how teams are. It's March 8th. Teams are who they are. Do I? Th- are they ten points better? I, I know that this. See, this is a tricky one. Like sometimes I'm pretty set in my way. Like I just want to take Tennessee because the line says to go that way. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Kentucky wants to play. You don't want to head into the tournament with like no momentum. Like, not no momentum, but on a loss. You want to kind of we're running hot. You know, that's how teams kind of go on runs into the NCAA tournament. Does Tennessee want to lose at home? Like, cause that's the way it's going to be either, t- you know, they're going to, it's going to be a 88 70 win or some kind of blowout, or this is a dog fight and Kentucky ends up winning. And then it's like, Oh, is Tennessee. How good are they? They did. They were a 10 point fave and lost at home. I, I don't know. This is maybe an over to me here. I mean, maybe yeah, an well, over. Don't, I, I, don't forget, Sean, we're getting a lot of wiggle room here. If you're taking the points. So yeah, Tennessee, Tennessee doesn't, um, have you know they could win the game, and uh, oh, yeah, you know, not and we get to cover right. And you know, I'll I'll use steal a uh adage that you've used on several times, and I thoroughly believe in is the great equalizer for a college basketball underdog is the ability to knock down three point shots. In, Ke- in you know, Kentucky, um, a lot of people don't realize they're number three in the country right now in terms of three point shooting. Uh, making 40.8% of their attempts. They're number one in the SEC. In the first matchup, Kentucky made 12 threes against uh, Tennessee. However, uh, they lost that game 103 to 92, and Tennessee also hit 12 threes. So, again, the one concern I have with Kentucky is their ability to stop people on the defensive side of the floor. Um, And um, they've shown signs of improvement but not consistent enough for me to trust them completely. But again, as Sean alluded to and Jesse touched upon, we're catching nine here and with a team with revenge and a team that's a quality team in Kentucky. So um, Tennessee, yes, they've won seven in a row, but I don't think Kentucky's going to go down easily here. I'm going to agree with Jesse and take the points here uh, with the Kentucky Wildcats. All right, Sean. Uh, Duke and North Carolina, the rematch. Um, North Carolina won the first meeting between these teams in Chapel Hill. Now they go to Cameron Indoor Arena. And uh, right now Duke is a four-point favorite in that game. And the total is uh, 152. According, and that's according to Ken Palm again, folks. So, uh, Sean, take it away. Yeah, this one for me, I this is a pretty simple one for me here. We have a revenge spot for Duke at home. The last time they played, North Carolina was coming in at home after losing at Georgia Tech, as, as bad as that was. And you had Duke in a back-to-back off a win over Virginia Tech. A team I had Virginia Tech there. They're going to think of like three or four. So it was kind of the spot where, all right, if they lost, it's no biggie. You go one-on-one on a road trip. That's okay. So now here we go, just like Tennessee. Final home game. Bitter arch rival, like nobody's business when it comes to rivalry games. And and I'm in a revenge spot. I'm going to, you know, I think North Carolina already has the ACC locked up, even though I think they'll both be 16 and four. I think North Carolina gets the breaker. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a Duke game for me. Eight and one run. The loss for them at Wake Forest since uh, before that eight and one run started, it was the Carolina loss. Give me Duke here at home. I think uh, the line's short enough here at four or five. I don't think the, 
number comes into play. This isn't like 1995 Duke North Carolina games. I, I'm thinking this is not going to be a close one. Duke wins going away, covers the number. Simple handicap for me on this one. Yeah, and you know, um, as good as North Carolina is, people don't realize how good they are defensively. But conversely, Jesse, they're not a very good shooting team. You know, they're dominant rebounding. Uh, they get on the offensive glass relentlessly. They have, you know, not as much size as they've had in years past, but they do a lot of good. They do a lot of little things well. But uh, I tend to agree with uh, Sean here um, in a revenge spot at home. I I'm leaning to our, I have a small lean at this point with uh, Duke plus four. What about you, uh, Jesse? Duke minus four, but yeah. Uh, uh, Duke I'll, minus four, I'm sorry. Yes. I'll make it, I'll make it uh, threes a crowd because uh, you mentioned uh, North Carolina's defense. I mean, Duke's defense has been lights out. Uh, the last seven or eight games. Uh, I think Duke's gone under in eight of their last 10. They've been really strong defensively and uh, at home in a revenge spot. Uh, yeah, four seems fair enough. What's what's Sean doing? Is he? I'm, set, I'm center screen, so I figure I'll dance or something since I'm not talking. <laughs> okay, about <him>. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I think he's yeah. giving you a hint, guys, that uh, Jesse <laughs> should be in the screen there. Anyway, yeah, okay. Are you happy now, Sean? Well, I just, I was just, I just, yeah, like, I get it. I mean, you, yeah, you know, I, listen, Ross, you know, I'm like, you, you've been on all the major networks. I, I I'll, think I'll, the I'll, guy's I'll, got I'll, a little bit of awe there and wanted you to be in the spotlight. <laughs> How's that? Jesse, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I think I said what I need to say. Uh, Duke, Duke's been playing strong defense. Four points seems like a fair line at home in a revenge game. Um, yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm with you guys. All right. So, uh, our official pick. For Mr. Higgs is Duke minus four. Um, me and Jesse both uh, agree with them. And uh, we agreed on the first game, too, Kentucky at Tennessee. I believe, well, Sean, did you you liked uh, Kentucky a little bit, too, as well, correct? Yeah, I, I would probably uh, lean a little. I, I was younger. thinking the over. I was thinking the over, oh, but the I would over. definitely, okay. you know, if, if we want to just everybody be all together in, in the party boat, I would say, why would I take nine points? Yeah, okay. So the official pick is Kentucky plus nine against Tennessee. Uh, Sean has a lean toward the over 163. And based on the first time they played, uh, you know, not only did that game go over, there was like a, an enormous amount, 143 free, uh, field goal attempts in that game combined. That's crazy. And uh, I mean, if you get 120 in a college basketball game, that's high tempo. Uh, up to one, 143 in a regulation uh, college basketball game is an extremely, extremely fast tempo. All right, let me get to my game. And uh, this one doesn't have the luster that the other two have, but it's Clemson at Wake Forest. And uh, right now, Wake Forest is a three-point favorite. And the total here, 151. And uh, after going through a bit of a funk, uh, Clemson has really got it back together again as they've uh, won four of their last five and seven of their last nine. On the other hand, this is a Wake Forest team that's lost their last three, including lo losses, uh, bad losses, to Georgia Tech and Notre Dame. And the Georgia Tech game was at home, and that was the only time that uh, Wake has lost all year, and they lost that game by one. So based on those recent results, Jesse, we should take Clemson, right? But like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend, because I anticipate you're going to see a lot of Clemson action coming in here as an under as, as the Tigers as an underdog. And basically, uh, I always bank on the fact that the general public out there that bets on sports has very short memories and they're seeing the recent results and will lean on that. Uh, but this is the final home game for Wake Forest where they've gone, like I said, 15 and one straight up this year. And again, I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. Uh, Kempom ranks um, home court advantages for all 362 Division I teams. And when they rank Wake Forest's home court advantage, they rank them <clears throat> the fifth strongest home court advantage in all of college basketball. So if playing at home, Ken Palm says it's worth 4.2 points per game for Wake Forest. And I really, um, they're going to be smarting coming off their first home loss of the season. Um, they're reeling right now, losing three in a row. 
And uh, I also anticipate uh, that Clemson, uh, they're in a little bit of a comfort zone. They beat Syracuse. And uh, I believe Sean could probably correct me on this, but I believe that they're, they assured themselves of a double buy uh, in the ACC tournament, which means they won't have to play the first two days. They're automatically in the quarterfinals. And uh, I would say if you can get Wake on the money line is 140 or less, I would take them on the money line. But anything higher than 140, just lay the points. I don't anticipate this line. It's according to Ken Palm is three. I don't see it going that high. I know that me and Jesse talked off here, and he said he thought it was a short line based on the fact that Wake Forest is 15 and one at home. But Jesse, you know, based on Wake losing their last three, including a home loss to Georgia Tech, I don't think that's going to be the case. But just curious to hear what your thoughts are there. Yeah, I mean, people are going to look at the, those three losses and say, oh, this Wake team's falling apart. But I think more significant than the three losses, Ross, is the prior previous game that they won, right? They upset Duke, or I know Sean's going to point out that they were actually a favorite in that game, but still, you beat a team like Duke, you storm the court, and then you, you know, you suffer a letdown. That seems pretty natural to me. That seems like uh, nature taking its course, you know? You beat Duke, you storm the court, and then you get too full of yourself. You get smacked around a little bit. Now you're uh, at home for your final home game against a very worthy opponent. Um, you're going to have to get up for this game, and I would expect them to. I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head, Ross, and th this might make my premium card, actually. Yeah, so again, um, let me ask you a question, serious question, Sean. Uh, if Wake Forest was playing Wesley College, which the fans <laughs> stormed the court if they beat anyway. Uh, your thoughts on this game, Sean? Yeah, and you know it's funny because in the game before that against Pitt, we're like, wow, no respect for Pitt getting like six points, and they got run out of the building by by Wake here. And you know maybe it's the the line is what it is because they have lost you know not just three in a row they've lost five or seven. You know they got the two home wins over Duke and Pitt, but you know bad on the road. I I feel. The three is probably about right based on their play of late, even off the, the losses on the road that, you know, you mentioned their home court, but you're off a upsetting home loss. You want it kind of like Tennessee. You want, you, you don't want to lose on your home court, your last game of the year. You know, that's not what you want to do. So three is basically a pick them. I agree. You know, if you want to do like a 135, 140, I get it. It goes up, which, I don't know if it's going to go up. I, I probably think it's yeah, going to go down. I, I mean, yeah. you lose three in a row and five or seven, people are going to be like, because, you know, you look at that, but like they're they're trending down right now. That's whether you're losing on the road or not, you're still losing to teams. Um, you're not playing good ball. So, yeah, I, I'm with you here. Let's make it a trifecta, all three games. Looks like we're we're all all, all, all in the same boat. Yeah, I mean, you two oh, guys, are, you two guys um, love to – get down early because you're an anticipating getting a better number uh, myself. Sometimes what I like to do is say in a game like this, uh, if it opened at three, hypothetically, then it might be to my advantage to wait a little bit here because I'm in, in my estimation, I'm anticipating action coming on Clemson for some of the reasons I just said. So just curious uh, real quickly before we get to our, uh, our, our viewers, questions and comments your thoughts jesse well ross you know i'm going to be looking at the money line as you mentioned uh, yeah and i'll be looking for it in that 140 range but you're not going to get that right now it's going to be a, a few hours yet before those first money lines come up so uh you know i'll, I'll be monitoring it but uh yeah um I won't wait too long. If I see the price I like, I won't be waiting too long to get it. Well, on. and again, I, my question, I think, to, I, maybe I wasn't clear enough, is is there a time, and based on you and Sean being very good at spotting the line and getting down early on it before it moves and having a more advantageous number, is there specific times where you like a play and say, you know what? Um, I'm thinking I can get a better line by waiting till the morning because I'm anticipating more action coming in on Clemson here that will lower this line. Uh, is there times that that occurs with you, or are you pretty much uh, no, stuck? No, I mean, there's, there's certainly times where that's the case, but I'd say 
that's a, a very small percentage of the time okay. for me. I mean, I'm, I'm usually looking. I'm usually looking at getting the CLV and getting it, getting in and getting it quick, um, and and exploiting the advantage that I'm on the other side of the world, right? So I'm up all night while everybody else is sleeping. I'm sitting there drinking coffee. Doing. I wake up at when I wake up in the morning and have my coffee. That's when everybody else in America is sleeping. All right. All right. All right. Get, well, hold that a minute. Now, before <laughs> you make yourself out to be working harder than anybody else. Just know, folks, there's a 12-hour difference between Thailand and, and where we are on the East Coast in the States. Go ahead. You I wasn't, I was, I wasn't I even suggesting working work harder. harder. Let's not I, was suggesting, I was suggesting it's working smarter because <laughs> I, can, I can literally roll out of bed at noon and still be 12 hours ahead of you guys. Yeah, well, you know what, Sean? I, I think what Jesse's su suggesting is we should both move to Thailand and we'll be one step ahead of the curve. But anyway... Uh, in terms of what I just asked, uh, without moving to Thailand, um, is is there uh, situations like I just alluded to, where you might wait in anticipation and getting a better number? Than yes, absolutely. I, I'll tell you my right now. I was talking about last night, yeah. Missouri State, Indiana State line. It was one forty seven, one forty and a half. I'm like, I wish it was like about a one fifty. I want to go under the total. It got to one fifty and a half. Uh, it came back down, and hello, the score last I saw was 10 to 8. So, yeah, I, I was anticipating a line move up to the 150 range. It went there. I got it, and the game looks good unless it goes to seven overtimes. I think I have a shot at hitting a under 150 and a half here. Yeah, and uh, you were sleeping when Jesse was making his picks, and so was I, and you still spotted that. So there you <laughs> have it. Anyway. Just joshing with you, Jesse. Somebody's got to pick on you because nobody else. Well, no, that's not true. Sean picks on you, too. Uh, in any event, folks, our official picks. Uh, Jesse likes Kentucky plus the nine. Uh, Sean likes Duke minus the four. And yours truly likes Wake Forest minus the three on Saturday, March 9th in college basketball. Okay, let's get to the viewers. And our man, Ninja. Yes. Lo and behold, comes in. Good morning, Ninja. How are you? Well, good morning. In Vietnam, it's not morning, though. So, but thank you for adjusting to our time zone uh, and, and, and watching us at uh, whatever the wee hour of the day. What, what time is it out in Asia right now, Jesse, in your neck of the woods? It is 28 minutes after 1 a.m. in the morning, but I think... I think Ninja's in like California or something. He's definitely. Oh, in okay. The he's States. not in Vietnam. All I right. Thought he was in Vietnam. No, he's from Vietnam, but I All think right. he's in the state. I got he you. can tell us where he's from or Vietnamese, where he's at. Oh, he's a Vietnamese American. All right, mm -hmm. we got there. Belmont versus Northern Iowa over one hundred and fifty. Well, you know Belmont's been historically an over team, but uh, I don't have a strong opinion on this. Jesse or Sean, if you do, please share it with the audience. I say this was uh, a one hundred and fifty-three opener, by the way, on this. Yeah, so uh, it's I would have to look at the money there to see what that dictates, but I could tell you that uh, most bettors don't line up to uh, bet on the under, and I would take a guess that sharp money to the under. So based on that, Ninja, uh, I wouldn't uh, go there. But, Jesse, you have any thoughts in that regard? No opinion on the game, but Ninja's letting us know he's hailing from Seattle, Washington, which oh, okay. isn't far right. far. From uh, where I'm from, well, he you know he grew up in Vietnam where you get monsoons, and now you're in Seattle, Washington. You may not get monsoons, but you get a lot of rain. So he likes the rain. He likes the rain, and there that's he why is. he's saying good morning because it's nine thirty. Yeah. All right, Mike M. Um, Mike, thanks for joining us today. Oh my God, it's Sean Higgs. Let's have a day, <laughs> yeah, Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Yeah, I, I'm assuming Mike follows uh, Sean on his, yeah, he's a good his guy. podcast. So yes. uh, appreciate you chiming in here, Mike, and I appreciate you joining us today. Any thoughts or comments? Feel free. There's our man Mo Green. There he is. Uh, and if I can get him up here, it'll be great. Uh, good job, guys. Thank you, Mo. Always a pleasure to have you join Mo us. Green. I was yeah. rolling my bones in Vegas. He's Mo Green. Love yes, it. sir. Godfather's in the house. That's it. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So Ninja's on a different you – know, if you've been following us on our live <laughs> shows, Ninja's been uh, always picking on Purdue as being overrated. He's got a new team that he likes to pick on, and that's the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, overrated, get revenge on Houston tomorrow. 
Um, I, don't know, yeah. I think Houston, you're talking about getting revenge on them. And uh, Kansas, could. I don't think anybody could have played a more perfect game than Kansas did in Lawrence against Houston. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say that there's a good possibility of that occurring, and especially with Kansas – um, has had their struggles on the road this year in Big 12 play. Anyway, Jesse, big, your thoughts? Big, big number. Big number. I, I saw Houston nine, minus nine and a half. Nine and a half at FanDuel. Yeah. Nine so, and a half. Uh, that you know, tells me uh, Houston's a play. That's the way I would look at it. But anyway, go ahead, Jesse. It tells me that I would pivot to uh, Kansas team total under or just look at the total. But uh, – I don't want, you know, I, I think Kansas on the road is definitely nothing. I don't want to have anything to do with Kansas on the road, but I don't know if they're quite bad enough to lay nine and a half. I know Houston's good, but Houston, maybe, maybe, do you, do you guys think that Houston's over that uh, offensive futility that creeps into their game from, you know, their, their MO has been, they're a great team, but they go through spurts where they can't score and they need to rely on their defense. And then in that in cases like that, you don't want to get, get caught laying nine and a half points. Do you guys think they're over that, or, do you, or is that something you still want to be concerned? With? Um, I th- you know I think that they play good enough defense where they can uh, overcome some of those spots. Now, having said that, in the first Kansas matchup, um, they are uh, they they were just. Unbelievable. I mean, they shot over 60% in that game. And, uh, you know, Sean, I look at it like Houston, they're they're playing with revenge. Kansas beats them the first time around. And here they are uh, laying nine to a a top 10 team. I think they're giving you the winner here. But what do you think? I'm thinking 67-59. Their two of their last three wins were identical 67-59 scores for Houston. So the offensive woes can definitely – Rear their ugly heads. We got a winner. Marsh Man is free pick package winner. All Jeff right. Janda. Look at this. Just <coughs> breaking news. Breaking news. Jeff Janda. Jeff Janda. So you get to pick any handicapper of your choice. And uh they uh you you won the March Madness package. So congratulations, Jeff. And uh, we'll be reaching out to you and uh shortly after the show, or maybe even during the show. Mr. Quinn or Seth will reach out to you and we'll get you going and uh, pick your favorite guy. And uh, you can't go wrong with the 10 guys we have on the site. But, you know, since it's us three, it'd be great if you picked one of us three. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, Let's get to the next question. I got a little thrown off there. Um, And, uh, again, Ninja. Ninja does not follow me on Twitter. Set your notifications on Monday. It's actually not this coming Monday, but it will be the Monday after Ninja, where we'll be doing the NCAA tournament show uh, with myself, Sean, uh, Jesse, and Doug Upstone. Uh, how many points? Here we go. How many? How many points do home court worth in neutral court? Well, it, it varies from team to team. You know, like I just said, Wake Forest. Um, Ken Palm ranks them as the top five, the fifth best home court advantage. They add uh, four, a little over four points to whatever the line would have been on a neutral floor. But again, guys, I'll let you uh, answer this. Usually it's anywhere from three to four points, uh, depending on how the strength of the home court and the quality of the uh, team that's playing at home, as opposed to what the line would be on a neutral floor. Jesse, you want to answer that? Didn't you previously tell us that Texas Tech has a six-point advantage on their own on their home? No, court? nobody get, nobody has more than a five. Uh, Texas Tech, a- Texas Tech, I believe, is number one at four point eight. Yeah. So okay, it, it might you might as well say five. Yes, but I, again, if you go down to uh, the middle of the road teams to uh, the mm-hmm. lower echelon teams, you might be getting two and a half to three at the most. So, Sean, you want to answer that? Yeah, no, that's about right. I mean, the three points is kind of like the always the, the staple that people use. You know? Yep. And All right, Jeff, congratulations again, and uh, we'll be in contact with you, and uh, good luck with uh, March Madness this year. He follows right. Gambler's World, but no handicappers. What's, what's that? Come on, Jeff. What's that about? Follows, but no handicappers. Well, um, again, it, you should start following them. And what I would do – 
as opposed to any other site that you may have dealt with in the past, I can guarantee all 10 guys, if you did a Google search on them, uh, you're going to find plenty of information. You know, there's no hidden agenda here. Uh, we all been doing it a long time. We all been doing it a long time successfully. And you have the most powerful to, uh, tool at your disposal in the internet and utilize that when making the choices. And then look at uh, some of the leaderboards and past records and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Scott Christensen, hey guys, can you touch on the Longwood versus Winthrop game? Starts in 45 minutes, 64, 61% of the bets are on Winthrop and 91% of the money. Um, I'm leaning toward Winthrop plus one and a half. Um, Jesse. I'm going to defer to Sean. Longwood. All right, so Longwood, uh, in other words, Scott, uh, the line, Sean, the line, op the line opened at one, and it's gone up to one and a half. And you're telling me everybody's betting Winthrop, so Longwood. So would, the line opened with Winthrop plus one. Yes, Longwood as a favorite. Now there. Okay, so if it goes up to one and a half, and just based on a simple mathematical equation, is if the ninety-one percent of the money has gone to Winthrop so far, Scott, just something I look at at times, but I'm not married to. Um, and the line moved to one and a half. It's what we call a reverse line movement. And uh, it, that usually indicates you should go the other way. Uh, but again, it's not something I utilize 100% of the time. It's just part, just a small part of my handicapping arsenal. That's, that's like one of the things, man. If you're going to yeah. do it, you got to do it religiously because it's not one timer. It's not a one timer. Yeah. You, it's, it's, it happens often. Yep. Enough where that's a something you might play all the time. I mean, it could yeah. be enough games for that. So, been, here, here, and again, with this, Ross, I was gonna say because people always yeah. bring that up, like, oh, look at the splits. Bro, the splits are different state to state. You know, like, oh, I, I'm looking at the splits on this site. I mean, they're different than the splits I have. You have you have to find a site like I use where the splits are consensus of many sports books. Okay. Yeah over a large amount of bets and they show you the exact amount of bets on each game. So that's, I would put more emphasis on that than which what Sean is alluding to is you'll go to some of these sites and you're getting, just getting the splits on one sports book. And it's maybe 15 to 20%, if probably less of the money pool that's coming in across the board uh, on this game in all sports books. So uh, that's something you want to, you want to consider. That's a good point, Sean. And the other part is, you know, the bottom line is 91% of the money is on Winthrop. And, and let's be hypothetical and say that's a consensus split, which I don't think it is, but it, 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 if it is okay. And it went from one to one and a half, that's telling me that 9% of the 9% of the bets or 9% of the money is from guys that are extremely sharp. Okay. Uh, and they, that weighs heavily in her decision, you know, and the other part of the equation is 39% uh, of the money is 39% of the bets is attributing to more money than the 61% of the bets are. So just something you want to keep in mind. Again, I'm not married to that concept, but it's something you should definitely pay attention to in your daily handicapping. Uh, Mike, like the under in the Duke game, Jesse, I think, or was it Sean? Jesse, I think you went there or not. Uh, I, I do have an opinion. Uh, I, I per particularly like the uh, North Carolina team total under. That, that's the way I'd go with the under. Okay. And that team total – uh, based on if, if it's 152, one it's going to be 73 and a half, 74 ish. Yeah. And 74 like maybe. Yeah. And like you alluded to, Duke's been playing awfully good defense. Uh, and, and so is, I mean, North Carolina has been good defensively all season for the most part, Mike. And they're up there. Uh, I think they're near the top of the national rankings and adjusted offensive defense and atop the, uh, ACC in that category as well. So, yeah, I don't have a problem with that under. Um, and here we go. Uh, Mike also chimes in and says, late betting is great betting. Well, you know, there's a degree of truth to that, okay? But in our situation, and I, I know how Sean and Jesse is are going to answer this, and but that's okay. Um, 
from our situation, Mike, we're, if we put out things for our clients late, we're going to get crucified or nobody's going to buy a thing from us because the window of opportunity is very short. I know I put things out a lot later than Jesse and Sean do because my style is much different than theirs. But anyway, um, Jesse. Yeah, you said it, Ross. Uh, we we got to get the games out as early as we can uh, to allow the clients time to get in on them. The clients don't want late plays. Uh, most, of, most of the time they prefer to get the games sooner rather than later. Um, I, I, I prefer to book my book my bets as soon as I see the line uh, that I want. And, you know, th that doesn't mean I won't wait on a line hoping that it'll either drop or I'll get more points with the dog. I will do that. But that's, that's going to be less than 10% of my bets are going to be waiting on a line. And uh, Sean? Yeah, I'm the same. I'm uh, I'm 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 early in because I I think I know how the line's going to move, but I do put in things later in the day. But not you know not you can't go too late because it's a catch twenty two. I put things early, then I get the emails from the boss. Oh, they can't get this line. Well, I, I don't tell you. It's been up. You know, I'm not. I, I, we're not. I'm not Lee Corso putting the hats on at three minutes before kickoff. <laughs> you know, do. You, Let's be honest. You're waiting that late. You're 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 chasing the steam, or you're just following people late, and that's fine. That's the average person does that. That's I, that's not what I do. Yeah, you know, we need it, to we need to give you a hat. That's it, for sure. We know right. it is. Though, Russ, I have no. If you're going to no, wait, if you're it. sitting live betting and and watching stuff, and all right, I do that at night. I'm looking. All right, where am I going to move on these? I see this going this way. I like this game anyway. I'm going to jump on it. So if you're going to be the person who's going to be game day guy, right? or gal and all right, it's four o'clock and we're going to start looking at these numbers. And again, I'm not, you win that way. People win that way. Cause here comes, there's a lot more money involved. There's a lot more different things going on. You guys are sitting out. Look at this late breaking news. So it all depends on how you attack things. So you know? Mike, I would tell you, I differ from both of these guys. Yeah. Um, in, in the fact that I, I wait, uh, I I'm of the, Again, you're talking about two guys and these two guys that are very good at spotting uh, lines that they are very confident in getting the best number on. In other words, if they waited in their view with their experience, they're not going to get as an attractive a number. Um, myself, uh, I like to wait, A, because I, I anticipate me getting a better line on certain games be in, in anticipation of public money coming in on one side or total that's going to uh, lean toward the obvious. So I'm a contrarian guy in a lot of ways. And then secondly, uh, I do, part of my handicapping arsenal is I do like to look at what I deem to be sharp money and, and, and give that a second look and say, am I missing something here? Is this actually sharp money or something I'm missing? So there's a lot of ways you could, um, I don't like to use skin a cat because that just sounds mean, but there's a lot of ways to handicap games as long as you're picking winners. You know what I mean? And that that's the bottom line. So for me to say the way Jesse and Sean do it uh, is wrong would be stupid on my part because A, I got them on the show for a reason. They're one of the best handicappers you'll find on the internet. Um, and secondly, they do it very good. I mean, the records would back that. So I, I just do it in a different manner. That's all I could say. All right. Uh, Nola face. Thank you for spending your time with us. Any insight in tournament futures looking forward to Monday again, Nola face. It's not this Monday. It will be a week from Monday. So sorry about the confusion in the message there. That's on me. Um, but uh, do you guys have any you know, we don't even have to come up with a number, okay, in terms of futures. But any team, um, Jesse or Sean, that you anticipate, I know Baylor seems to be that trendy play right now at plus 5,000 or whatever they are. And I, I've said it that I need to see a team with, that plays better defense for me to have confidence in making a late run. Jesse, you have any thoughts in that regard? I think we had this conversation last week, and my exact words were, Baylor is going to lose in the second round to a Mountain West team. So I'm going <laughs> to stick to that. 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take like the second or third best Mountain West team, and uh, and say that's that's my team rather than Baylor. And uh, I would say that um, I would look for a team that has a veteran backcourt. It doesn't necessarily have to be a senior backcourt because these days senior backcourts uh, are rare, especially at the power conference level. But if you're looking for a mid-major, look if you can get a senior backcourt at the mid-major level that both guys are averaging double point or double digits uh, scoring per game, one guy is a great point guard that dishes out a lot of assists, uh, and the team itself plays real good defense. Uh, that would be, to me, a requisite for a live sleeper as far as a uh, college basketball sleeper goes. But, Sean, do you have any thoughts in that regard? I grabbed, I grabbed the Kentucky at 20 to 1. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it's a team that's. Got NBA guys on it. Let's be honest. I mean, like, yeah, but you know, guys, teams you know, get hot. It's twenty to one. It, I'll take a shot at twenty to one. Sean, you know, if you look at Kentucky, it goes against what I'm looking for, and that's a great defensive team. But yes. we've seen signs, okay, as opposed to Baylor, we've seen signs where Kentucky could be a really good defensive team when they put their mind to it. Uh, using the, the game at Auburn as an example, they held Auburn to less than sixty points on their home floor. And that's yep. an explosive offense, offensive team in Auburn. So, yeah, I mean, great question. Uh, and uh, but again, um, those are the key elements I'd be looking for. And uh, you heard what Sean and Jesse had to say in that regard. And I agree with Sean. I think that uh, I like Kentucky a lot more at twenty to one than Baylor at fifty to one. I know the odds for Baylor uh, seem really attractive, but there's a reason why. They're 50 to one. And I'm sure I, again, I am going to hang my head on the fact that they're 50 to one because the odds makers are seeing the same thing that I do. Uh, defense is an afterthought for Baylor right now. So in any event, uh, here we go. Oh, Bretto. Hey Ross, any good line reads? What is the most fishy looking line for tonight's slate of games? Uh, guys, I'll turn it over to you first and uh, then I'll take out. I'll, I'll answer that. Fishiest line. Well, all right, I'll go to I'll go to one right now because we have William and Mary playing NC A and T, who I grabbed at a it opened, I think, at like a three and a half four. It's up to seven now, I believe. Yeah. Like what is that about? That that's a that's an odd line for two garbage teams. Another one I thought was interesting was the um Pepperdine line. It was a one opener. One and a half up to three and a half. Now you have a Pepperdine team that is, I think they're the eight seed and San Diego's a five. But what did we see yesterday? See, that's a game to me where is that line juiced up because of a I beat think, down yeah. Yeah. they throw on a team, you know? So that that's a, it's fishy. To, I, I, not that it's fishy. I, whenever I see a lower team, like I had Lehigh the other day, they were a six seed favorite on the road. And that's in the Patriot League where they're playing on campus sites. So that one, not as much as fishy because it's it's weird to throw the, the fish out there when it's on a neutral court and teams are in back-to-backs and it's tournament time. But those are a couple that jumped out at me that looked out like, what's that one about? Um, it, it all depends on, on your fishiness for me, old Breda. You know, but those are two that jumped out at me right away. Yeah, I, I tend to think that that Pepperdine line is juiced up because of what people saw yesterday right. against a terrible opponent. I mean, at one point, I think I looked at the game and was like something stupid, like 50 to 14, Sean. Am I wrong? Uh, it, it, was it was ridiculous. It, yeah. I think, yeah. I think half time was 52 to 9. Yeah, okay, there you go. So, um, Jesse, your thoughts? Well, like, uh, there's one game that really stands out as fishy to me. And I bet it uh, on the opening line. It's moved four, four and a half points, but I can't really mention it because that's my my big game of the year today. So uh, yeah, you know, you'll you'll find out tomorrow which one I thought was the fishiest one because that's the that's the one that I got the good CLV on. And uh, I, I did want to mention. I know this is a little bit off topic, but uh, if if anybody hasn't seen Joe Rogan interviewing Billy Walters, if you're interested at all in Billy Walters and sports betting. I strongly recommend it. And I love listening to Billy Walters give advice. 
because he's got a way of simplifying things where everything that pours out of his mouth, it's not complicated. It doesn't sound like bragging. It just sounds like a very humble, simple approach. And what I like the most about it is when he describes how he handicaps football, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, I, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. The only thing that he mentioned that he does that I don't do is that I, I might be lacking is he gets really into the kickers more so than I ever have. You know, and uh, Joe Rogan, that's the guy that um, Jesse's son says I remind him of. Uh, I, guess the, <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but uh, in any event. Well, uh, he, yeah, he's I, a black he's a black belt and he's uh, he's probably a, a certified uh, ass kicker, I guess I'll say. If you can say okay. that on the show. All right. Well, it's, yeah, you can. I mean, uh, we can't, you know, look at. Uh, I know YouTube has a lot of guidelines, but saying ass on the show isn't one of them. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say I don't have one game in particular on this whole board tonight that I would say is a fishy line. If there was something that even came close to resembling it, I would say it would be the Dayton line uh, because they're a heavy eight and a half point favorite right now. Uh, and I see a nine out there as well. And uh, Dayton lost to VCU the last time, the first time they met this season at VCU. Uh, Dayton has, uh, after a, a tremendous start to the season, has lost a few games recently. Uh, so they don't seem as dominant yet. The line is where it is right now. So I would say that would be the closest that they're begging you to take the underdog and VCU in this this matchup. Um, and, uh, I would say that based on that, I would have a lean toward Dayton in that regard, um, team that can clinch. And also the, the guy from VCU is probably out to the, one of their top scorers. Yeah. Saluki or Yeah. And like Shoot. I said, there's not that one that we usually talk about, or I bring up on the show mm -hmm. that jumps out at you. And I know we all think alike to a certain degree when it comes to fishy lines or, lines that jump off the screen at you. And I don't see that to be one of the cases tonight. Uh, teams that can clinch, exact, uh, example, USF, uh, do you think they finished their conference season with no motivation? Dayton is another. It's a very good question. Um, I would say Dayton isn't one of them based on what I just said. And remember, Dayton is playing with revenge. Um, I'd have to look at the South Florida uh, situation. But it's certainly a good point, Pound it. Um, if if you feel that South Florida is overvalued based on the fact that the other team might be playing with more urgency and desperation, and uh you might be able to catch South Florida in a complacent spot here, yes, I think that's a very good point to bring up. But uh Jesse. I'm 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 not sure if I understand his question. Maybe Sean can well, speak I, pound it pound at ease. Yeah, but, no, I'm uh, thinking he's talking. I'm I'm gonna go like what we're talking right. about, like Tennessee being at home, like uh, nine point fave. How are they gonna come out? Do they want cover numbers? And you got South Florida on the road here, and they beat them 69-50 last game. I uh, is he gonna? Are they gonna be want to be covering a monster spread or like? Oh, we got the tournament. See, I look yeah. at that South Florida team because I had them in their home game last, where they were. I, I think they were like a a small favor or whatever, like five and a half, six. You're like, wow, that's a low line. Tulane's a lowly team, but I'm like, that's a team that has, hasn't been good in, in ages. They're winning a conference championship. They, they, there's a lot of motivation to come out and play. We're at home. And even here on the road, I, I don't mind late, whatever the spread is tomorrow. If it's under six, right. I don't know. What to, I mean, I don't even know what Ken Bob's going to have this out. They've won 15 straight and are 21 and one their last 22. I mean, they, and they're, and they're covering the last 10 or yeah. eight, one, one, like but yeah, I, mean, I don't I don't want to get in front of the team and be like, I'm going to show you how smart I am. I'm going to go against some. No, yeah, I, if no. I lose with that way, how many people had Murray State yesterday? That looked nice and easy, right? You beat a team by 20 and team by 18. You're a two point fave and you score 12 points at halftime. That's a fishy line. You know, that's exactly what we're, we were talking about in the prior question alluded to by uh, old Bretto. Uh, yes. But uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, Jesse. Um, what he's alluding to is South Florida having already clinched first place. Yeah, but Dayton, 
Dayton has not, though. So Dayton he- has no in in Dayton, but Dayton again um, nationally ranked. You know what I mean? Clinched yeah. a birth clinched, in the clinched in the, the birth in the NCAA tournament. You know, mm-hmm. Dayton doesn't have to win the A10. Everybody else in the A10 does to get there. Mm-hmm. That's what I think he's alluding to. And mm-hmm. uh, how do you react to situations like that? And I would say. Dayton wouldn't be one of those games that uh, qualifies for me, but certainly Kentucky would because Tennessee is laying nine um, and Kentucky, they already had beat uh, Tennessee or Tennessee has already won at Kentucky. Now they're hosting them and Tennessee's got things locked up. So um, yeah, uh, that's. I I think you got to look at it on a team by team basis. Yeah, uh, judging the character of the team and the program and the coaching staff, and a team like South Florida, nobody expected South Florida to win the uh, American this year. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, you, you sort of I think South Florida is the kind of team that you expect them to be so jacked up just at where they're at that, uh, yeah, and they've they've been dominating that conference so much. Yes. So I, I, I would I would not want to step in front of South Florida. I wouldn't want to step in front of Dayton today, um, but we already talked about the Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee, for me, it's not just the Tennessee's won and clinched. That plays a role, but it's also those last three games, is big monster games, big monster wins. Um, they, they proved any, everything by, you know, Auburn, Alabama, and South Carolina. And, and how do you just bring that game? I mean, you have to have – an exhale somehow, somewhere. And I think this could be it in their final home game, whether it doesn't mean they're going to lose, but I wouldn't want to lay nine with them. In that yeah. yeah. And, and let me clarify, there's no, no brainer way to do this. And uh, Jesse, I think that's exactly what Jesse alluded to. And it's all good points made by Jesse. So, I, I, you know, I think people tend to think that there's one set way. There's something that they can no brainer way through Wake up in the morning, see a line. Okay, this is what Jesse or Sean said to look out for. Look out for and automatically use are two different things, okay? So there has to be, like Jesse says, um, there has to be more evidence for a prosecutor to take a uh, case to court, not just, I think he did it. And uh, that's, that's exactly what Jesse's trying to say. Uh, hey, Ross, what platform do you use to get your public betting splits? One that I pay for. So, old Brett, <laughs> if, you're, if you're one, to, if you're willing to pay money, like a small fee, like you do at Ken Palm, I'd be more than happy to share that with you. Uh, Carlos Benavenitas. Hey, Carlos Benavides. Excuse me, Carlos. Hi, guys. Great show as always. How do you like Belmont at minus one against Northern Iowa? Um, I don't have a strong opinion on that game. Maybe Jesse or Sean does. Jesse, uh, do you have any kind of look? No. And uh, Sean, I got uh, I got a Belmont on a nineteen to one future on Belmont. So that's you know where I'm leaning on that game there. So well, there you have it. If he likes him at nineteen to one, he certainly must like him at minus one and a half against Northern Iowa. I hope. I got, I hope any, I, go I got one for this one, uh, Ross. How's everyone feeling about San Diego State, Boise State tonight? Well, a wise man once said, I, I heard this and I thought it was just yeah. genius. If it, if it's uh, plus eight, I'll take Boise State. If it's minus six, I'll take San Diego State. You guys know who said that? Uh, Jesse Shul. No, it was I said Sean. On, I said on that. Day money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I, I I agreed with it. That's why I remember. That's why I remembered it. I mean, I, 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 that's I, what the line was. It, it opened up at a six. I mean, San Diego State at six, sure. Boise at eight. I, you know, this is, and I said this last week on the show, even here. I think some of these lines in these games, Mountain West, especially the Mountain West, the way these teams have been winning on each other's home courts and the whole unranked rank kind of thing. I think they're baking an extra minimum two points into these lines, like. Yeah. Uh, we saw with like New Mexico over Colorado State it was like five. It went to eight. Colorado State at home was three. It went to six or something like just ridiculous moves that should not happen. But the blinders on people when people start talking about what they're seeing on teams playing on the road and conference playing and losing, and it's you know oh you lose here you're going to come home and win. It, it's just 
blindly jumping on it and they're like, hey, they're gonna do it anyway, so who cares? I'll jump it up a little bit. People still bet it. I can't I can't lady eight there. Don't do it. Yeah. I uh to me, um I you know, I faded Boise in a game against Nevada, and Boise was at home, and Bo- Boise has a really strong home court. Um, they're not as good on the road. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Is San Diego State coming off a loss, if I'm not mistaken? Close game at UNLV, yeah. Yeah. They lost. Yeah. I had UNLV in that match. UNLV. Um, yeah. I, I would say the team coming off a loss against a team that's nowhere near as good on the road as they are at home. And San Diego State uh, has not lost at home all year. And uh, they're usually quite dominant at home. And I think you're catching the Aztecs in, in a good spot here if you want to back them. Uh, let's put it this way. And, uh, again, uh, I would lo- love to get down on this game right away at six and a half. But at seven and a half, eight, there's a degree of hesitancy. But if you put the proverbial gun to my head here, I would definitely take the San Diego State Aztecs uh, minus the points here. All right, uh, let's see. What do we got here? Alfred, how's everyone feeling about this? I think we just discussed that. that. Yeah, that was the one we just discussed. Next one has to do with the Evansville game. Evansville, Purple Aces, plus 14. What do you think about that? They played Duke. They played. What's the relevance that they played Duke? (laughs) Yeah, I, th- than- I think he I think he meant to put Drake. It's Drake instead of Duke. Ah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah, it's yeah. Just a little- <laughs> uh yeah, definitely. I, I would I, I hate laying double digits, but it's Drake. I mean, they were off that crazy game, you know, 59, 53. They were down any kind of close battles like that. I'm gonna think what he got left in the gas tank. Probably, you know, Missouri Valley unders. You want to take an under here instead, DJ Grand? I and I'm double digit dogs. In conference, any kind of conference, I'm all for. I'm all for it, but you're in a back-to-back. You're off a grinder, and now you have a Drake team. Look at it again in the NCAA tournament. Let's be honest. Whoever yeah. wins this is getting in. I mean, so they got bigger fish to fry. I don't know if they're going to come out. Blowout, I prefer the under, though. Um, uh, I, I think I, I said want- this earlier this season, uh, and Jesse usually remembers this kind of stuff, but I like Drake a heck of a lot more than I do Indiana State in the Missouri Valley. Uh, my eye test, just watching Drake play, I think they're a better team. And I like Drake to win the Missouri Valley. So, But in terms of this matchup, uh, yeah, it's, you know, this is a game that there's a lot better value on the board, uh, in my opinion, than to uh, hang your hat on this contest. Like Sean said, laying double digits in a conference tournament isn't always a great idea. Uh, doesn't mean you should automatically take the double-digit dog either, Jesse. Yeah, I I got no uh, I got nothing for you guys. Just so one Drake has won ten in a row in the series. They are seven and two against the spread. They beat them seventy eight seventy five on February thirteenth. But at Drake, January twentieth, ninety seven of forty eight. Uh, again, I would lean under, but that's just me. All right, Daniel, uh, how do you guys feel about the Longwood game? We discussed that already. Sean likes Longwood, but thank you for chiming in, Daniel. Have you guys ever met Billy Walters? Um, Yes. Yes, I have met Billy Walters. There you go. And I talked to him. Yeah. In person. uh, And Billy Walters has never been the same since. Anyway, Jesse. (laughs) Uh, I have not. I would like to speak to the man. Uh, As I said, I was surprised by how – Humble, he comes across sort of soft spoken, very uh, not, not braggadocious. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't really remind me of um, our friend that we know yeah, so well, yeah, 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 another Las Vegas legend. But uh, no, yeah, uh, like Las Vegas legend in his own mind, Billy Walters is a legend, but you know? but yeah, Billy Walters is basically known as the, the godfather of, of the business, yet he he acts like he, he's got a a southern charm to him that he's uh yeah i i think he's, his demeanor is great I, i'd love to speak to him now. yeah but you know the thing with billy walters is this and people have to realize this as compared to how we do things billy walters can get down on games late he is a professional sports better now we bet on our games and we do well okay but when i say professional sports better he doesn't share his picks with the public and secondly 
uh, Billy Walters will sometimes set the sports books up for a middle. That's how he operates. Yes. Uh, Billy Walters will get down at the last minute at times. Uh, so Billy Walters might go three days without putting a pickup or p- betting a game. And then he's got a hell of a lot more resources than we do as well. Next day. We don't put a be- uh, pickup for uh, three days on the sites we're on. Uh, these these guys know exactly what I mean. A couple site owners will say, hey, if you don't start putting picks up, we're going to take you down. So uh, there's there's a distinct difference. Not to say that we're in the same league or class, but how could I put this? Billy Walters also is a guy that bets a lot of money, okay? So, like, Sean, we've talked time and time again that he's a volume handicapper. Um, and to be a volume handicapper, you have to exercise great money management. Billy Walters is a guy – they could hit 54% and be a millionaire at the end of the year because of the amount of money he bets. And I had somebody uh, comment on our last video when I said what my um, college basketball best bet record was at 119 and 90. They said, it's 57%. You break even. And I broke it down for him. <laughs> I called the guy Aristotle, first of all. Um, if you don't know Aristotle, that's, is great that's, mathematician. That's, that's break even? 57% yeah. is break even? So, I mean, that I guy's, broke, yeah. stop betting. Yeah, I, if Billy Walters goes 54%, and I'm not saying that's what he does, but I can guarantee you Billy Walters is not hitting 65 68% because of a lot of factors, not because he's not that good. He bets a lot of money, number one, and he's going to have some losing picks when he's trying to catch a middle. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. That's why he's the best at what he does. He does, he's not dependent I don't think at all. He's swept out too many games, Billy Walters. I think every bet he makes, he he figures uh, not not to say that he wins all his bets, but I, I think that he uh, he feels pretty comfortable that uh, that he's not uh, you know sweating it out. No, he's not. Ca- and again, Jesse, the more you make over the years, the more you could bet. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's simple math, and if you're betting. Ten twenty thousand dollars a game on average, and once in a while stepping up and making a fifty k play, uh, you know, and and you only hit fifty four percent. My point being is, a guy like him doesn't have to hit fifty five to sixty percent to be successful, like we have to be. You know what I mean? He's a better. He's out to make money. He's looking to catch middles at times and very good. At, he's look. He's the type of guy that can move a line with a big play uh, right off the bat when it opens, and the books will automatically react and move that line, and then they will generate more money that moves that line, and, and now he can come back the other way. And specifically speaking, that's what he intended on doing in the first place, or he might come back the other way for half as much, trying to catch a middle and still assuring himself of making a very good profit on his original bet. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So I, Sean is looking all over the place like he's lost. No, oh, you're I, not just, no I, I, I tweeted out a, I had a, I had high point minus uh, 11 and minus 12. Okay. But never in doubt winner. They were down. They were down 18 to four to start the game. And they <laughs> covered the 12. So there yes, you have it. It's, never in doubt. That's why live betting knows, isn't always a good idea. All right. I just read his book. Such an interesting person. Yeah, I haven't got to that yet, Anthony, and thank you for chiming in, but I would recommend it to anybody. I haven't read it, but I, you know, to, to pick his brain and, and listen to some of the stuff that he has to say and his methods and stuff, um, you know, uh, look, anybody who does this successfully and does it as successfully as long as he has and has, you know, is a feared sports better at the sports books, because he could hurt you so badly, it's never a bad idea to read anything he has to say in regards to uh, sports betting. Anthony also says he enjoys the show. And, Anthony, we appreciate you having uh, being part of the show with us. All right, time to wrap it up, guys. Um, again, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please take in a second to do so. Don't forget our uh, March Madness special uh, for all the handicappers at the site. And that qualifies, in, and I'm – Again, doing this without the owner's permission, but he gives me a little bit of leeway. 
Um, it, the March Madness package is a subscription plan that's 30 days or less. So if you buy a March Madness package from any one of us, whether it be one guy, two guys, three guys, uh, if if it doesn't make a profit, we're going to credit your account back the exact amount you paid for it. Now, again, paying for it means money out of the pocket and not just necessarily uh, because you paid half of it with credit, you're going to get the full purchase back. No. All right. So anything you pay, specifically what you pay, we guarantee our single game, multi-game daily packages and 30-day subscription plans, 30 days or fewer subscription plans, and that would fall under that category. All right, uh, Jesse, there's, uh, you're ready to sneeze. Um, before you sneeze, uh, maybe when you scream out, yeah, go ahead. Smash that like button. Smash. Now I don't have to sneeze. See, I'm better. I'm better. Yes, yeah, that like button. It's a small thing. But, uh, well, Brett, he needs your uh, – he wants you to get in touch with him to give him that uh, platform. He doesn't okay, want you to forget about that. Does he say? Did you send me? All right, well, uh, old brother. He's like, why are you uh, gatekeeping? What's that? <laughs> why you are? Why are? Why are you gatekeeping? I thought I'm supposed to be a better sports, but he's well, getting pissed that you didn't give him the platform yet. Oh, old brother. Here's the thing, okay? Our sponsor is GamblersWorld.net. And this is a competitive site in some sense of the word. So it would be um, a lack of integrity for me to mention that site on air when we're being sponsored by somebody else. And it's just, but nice try. Anyway, yes, that was funny, Oprah. So should he hit you up on Twitter, Ross? Hit DM me up on my, on my personal email, which is benjaminsports at yahoo.com. That's Benjamin Sports. At yahoo.com, old brother, and I'll be more than happy to share that with you there, where it's just between me and you. All right, until the next time, which will be Monday, I'll be back with Doug Upstone. We'll be talking about the, uh, we'll be talking about some conference tournament action on Monday. And then uh, Jesse and Sean will be back with me on Tuesday. We'll be talking more college basketball conference tournament action. It's Hold on, right I thought you said, wait a sec. I thought you said we could do a uh, spring, spring training baseball on Tuesday. Isn't that yeah. what people want? No? Yeah, absolutely. Uh. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I'd rather bet on a checkers game. Anyway, uh, and to, <laughs> until the next time, for Jesse Shule, Ross Benjamin, and Sean Higgs, take care and God bless, folks.